This is San Diego News Daily. Hello, welcome to San Diego News Daily. I'm Jackie Crea. Let's get to some headlines. Amtrak is bracing for a busy week of crowded events in San Diego by adding a special service route. So starting tomorrow, the Pacific Surfliner train will resume daily operations through South Orange County. Now this comes in time just for San Diego Comic Con, X Games, California Finals Weekend and Del Mar Racetrack Opening Day. These are highly anticipated events and follows a railroad protection project finishing near the San Clemente Pier. To accommodate the expected increase in travelers, three additional trains will be added to the Pacific Surfliner schedule from Friday, July 21st through Sunday, July 23rd. Train 568 will leave out of Los Angeles and arrive in San Diego, making all stops in between. Train 799 will leave out of San Diego and arrive in Santa Barbara. This one provides an evening return for X Games attendees traveling north. And then train 798 will leave out of Santa Barbara and arrive in Los Angeles. This provides a late night return for X Games attendees traveling south. So as a reminder, the train service was paused because of a landslide early last month. Hollywood is shut down this morning as actors and writers join forces on the picket lines. Now, many of them are saying they're fighting for the future of the industry, leading many to believe this strike could last a long time, like well into the fall or maybe even longer. Writers have been on strike for 75 days. Actors joined them this weekend, picketing from coast to coast. They're united after contract negotiations collapsed over a number of issues, including pay. Actors won't be filming movies or hit TV shows. They're also prohibited from doing voice work or promoting any projects, a move that's bringing Hollywood to a screeching halt. There's no way that the CEOs and the boards of these companies can look at what's happening right now behind me and at every lot in L.A. and New York and elsewhere and come to any conclusion except we've made a tremendous mess of this and we need to fix it. We need to actually address the needs of these two unions. The Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers, which represents Hollywood Studios, including NBC Universal, released a statement saying we are deeply disappointed that SAG-AFTRA has decided to walk away from negotiations. This is the union's choice, not ours. And we have an update on the latest twist in a lawsuit over the missing remains of an influential San Diegan. Sydney Cooper helped lead the movement to celebrate Juneteenth here in San Diego. This week, the Cooper family says Greenwood Cemetery finally found their father's missing remains. NBC7's Kelvin Henry explains where and how they were finally found. Exhausting, um, hopeful, um, reflective. Those are the words of the Cooper family after Sidney Cooper Sr.'s body was found. My parents were dynamite, uh, pillars in the community, always giving back, great hearts. Sidney Cooper Sr. and the Cooper family are staples in the San Diego community. They owned a barber shop, a fruit stand, and helped popularize Juneteenth in San Diego. The mystery of where Sidney Cooper Sr.'s remains are began in March when the matriarch of the family, Thelma Cooper, died. The day before Thelma Cooper's funeral, cemetery personnel opened the grave site and realized her husband, Sidney Cooper Sr., who died more than 20 years ago, disappeared. Sidney Cooper Jr. says Greenwood Memorial Park and mortuary is solely to blame. You want to blame somebody. You even want to blame the people who are digging the grave now, but it's not their responsibility. It wasn't, the responsibility wasn't on them. Uh, the responsibility laid squarely with Greenwood. Uh, and that failure caused a lot of heartache. The Cooper family filed a lawsuit shortly after discovering Cooper Sr. was not in the family plot. Along with not being in the plot, the family alleges pieces of the casket packaging was missing. My father and mother had bought uh, a supportive covering for their casket so it wouldn't be too much deterioration, preservation of their body in the casket and that wasn't done. Cooper Jr. says his family is horrified by the condition of his father. From what I understand and know is that my father's condition is in horrific, horrific condition, which is he's not deserving of that. He's deserving of better care. 
And so that honest falls squarely on their shoulders. Cooper family attorney Eric Dubin says he fears issues like this are happening to other families as well. And we are very concerned this has happened to other families in San Diego. And Ms. Daldine and I will not stop until we find out the truth of what happened here and how widespread it really is. Sidney Cooper Sr. was finally laid to rest next to his wife, Thelma, today. And Cooper Jr. says he hopes this error is not repeated. We're here to uh, make sure that doesn't happen to anybody else. Kelvin Henry, NBC7. Colorful floats and flag-waving people filled the streets of Hillcrest on Saturday for the annual Pride Parade. Hot temps made hats, fans, and umbrellas necessary for some, right, to help them protect from the sun. Even with the warm weather, though, people we talked to say the excitement in the air was contagious. Normal Street is the beginning of the world headquarters of Gaydom. Look at right here. It's not bad. This is nothing. I'm from Louisiana. This is nothing. <laughs> you know what? It's like everybody, have you ever walked around but nobody says hi to you? Here, you walk around, everybody's saying hi, everybody's saying happy pride, everybody's smiling. You know, it's just, just the positivity that just spreads out for everybody. The two-day celebration continues through tonight in Balboa Park. And although Pride is a celebration, consumer advocates are sending out warnings to the LGBTQ plus community about scams happening this month. The Hillcrest Business Center tells NBC7 to be alert at all times of those who want to take advantage of these massive events. They've received multiple complaints that report the stolen cell phones of some of their customers. They also say one of the most common scams are investment scams. That's when scammers promise to make you a millionaire and then actually you're stealing your money. Another one is the romance scam, which typically happens on dating apps. They ask you for private pictures and then blackmail you. Later threaten the release of those pictures if you don't pay them. You get an offer. If it seems too good to be true, whether that's an offer of a date or an offer of a financial deal, if it seems too good to be true, it probably is. If you're a victim of fraud, you should report it immediately to authorities. And by visiting the official website of the Federal Trade Commission, you can find the link at NBCSanDiego.com slash response. Our annual Pride Parade is almost 50 years old. It's not the only largest single day civic event in the region. Not only it's among the largest prides in the country, attracting more than 300,000 people. NBC 7 Strandel Maniz spoke with pride organizers about why these celebrations are so important. This San Diego Pride comes on the heels of a national state of emergency for LGBTQ Americans. And organizers tell me that all of this isn't a celebration of the freedom that exists now, but the freedom that's to come. Revving up the parade. Everybody loves motorcycles. The Women's Motorcycle Contingency leads San Diego Pride into its 49th year taking over Hillcrest. However you live your life, it, it should be equal for everybody. And that's part of what this is, is, you know, we spread awareness. The Pride began to spread awareness of the 1969 Stonewall Rebellion Stonewall in New York. The rebellion was a community uprising a after continual police harassment and social discrimination. San Diego Pride comes as hate crimes accelerate against the LGBTQ community. So much so, the human rights campaign declared a national state of emergency. As we've seen this year, just in 2023, over 700 pieces of anti-LGBT legislation across the country. There's still a fight to have, and there's still celebration. Pride Programs Director Mark Maddox says this pride and all the efforts the rest of the year slowly turn the corner towards a more equitable San Diego country and world. In a perfect world, we'll, we'll all be acceptant of one another and share the love and, and, you know, crush the hate. In Hillcrest, Shondell Meniz, NBC7. Meteorologist Brooke Bartell will have a look at your weather right after this. Only one team in San Diego is certified most accurate. NBC7's First Alert Weather. What does that mean for you? Helping you plan ahead with our hour-by-hour -hour forecast. And knowing exactly when rain will move in. First Alert Weather is coverage you count on. 
I'm NBC 7's Brooke Martell. Excessive heat warnings still in effect for your inland valleys and your mountain communities. This one through Tuesday night until 8 p.m. at least for now. You can see the excessive heat warning also in place for the desert communities until Wednesday evening. That's set to expire at 11 p.m. But you saw those temperatures there really heating up across the interiors out along the coastline for your Sunday. You'll also notice it's a bit warmer just by a few degrees. Temperatures from the mid 70s to about the low 80s will be warmer for downtown San Diego over your inland valley communities. We have a mix of 70s, 80s and 90s. Some areas really close to those triple digits mid to upper 90s for the mountains 116 today for Borrego Springs really heating up there. We want to show you here your 10 day forecast what you can expect. We're staying warm through the 10 day period. Same thing here for your inland valley communities really hanging on to those 90s for the max daytime highs. Similar conditions for the mountain communities. You can see right around 113 to 116 degrees through the next 10 days for your desert region. I'll send it back over. OK, thank you, Brooke. So no one matched all of the numbers in last night's Powerball drawing. Those winning numbers were 2, 9, 43, 55, 57 and the Powerball 18. So now the jackpot for tomorrow's drawing stands at $900 million. But don't forget, you still have another chance at winning big with Mega Millions. It has a jackpot of $640 million. That drawing is Tuesday night. Good luck. There's more coverage you can count on at NBC7.com. You can always find us on your Roku or Samsung Smart TV app. Thanks for watching. I'm Jackie Crea.